My name is Brianna, and I welcome you to the Tales of Adventure, a D&D podcast like no other. I'm Nate. I play Darwin Grimm on the podcast Seasons of Skyrend. Pretty well, right there, you look... I, I don't know what you look like, but I'm, part of me is concerned. It's, I'm, I'm fine. It's fine. Somehow I don't believe you, especially after everything that's happened. Ugh. In everything. Are you referring to some specific event? I'm referring to the death of a god that happened a few days ago. And all uh, of the insanity that has happened since then. Eh, I didn't really know that god that well. It's not like we we're friends. It's fine. I, I think I saw you during part of the fighting. Oh yeah, we, uh, we contributed to that death greatly. I would have helped but I was busy keeping people in the streets far away so that they didn't get caught in the crossfire. That's important. There was a death trap around there. Yeah, very important. Good. Forgot to introduce myself. My name is Istra. Nice to meet you. I'm Darvin. Darvin. I believe I met your friend Aaron in this. The day before the attack happened. Oh, you met the bard. Yes. You get impression? Yes. And Always does. I got part of a story from him, and it sounded like you've been through quite the time leading up to that fight. I imagine afterwards it's been yeah. stressful. Yep, that's pretty accurate. Believe. He mentioned that you were a follower of Corum, the god of death. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a monk to Corum. I figured that by your style of clothing and some of the fighting I saw you do. How did you come to be a part of this group? Um, specifically? You know, it's a funny story. I wasn't religious. I wasn't raised religious or you know, in the servitude of any specific deity. My father was a merchant, is still a merchant, really, you know, pretty, uh, fairly wealthy merchant. But there was some trouble back home. And for a short amount of time, well, I say short now, there was a mysterious group of people after me, and I didn't have the information at first, but my dad sent me to the monastery to keep me safe. And it just kind of stuck, I guess. Makes sense, and the monastery is a very good place for hiding people. Exactly, and in this particular monastery is also good at training me in case, you know, the inevitable should ha happen. So h how long were you there? Um, it was several years years. And what made you leave? Eventually, I I was still I was still working at that monastery when you know, my entire time in Karami. So when I met the bard and our other associates, I was still there. And I kept that up until it became necessary for us to leave the first time. And even then, it was like I checked in with my superiors at the monastery and I got some standing orders for the time I was away. So I'm really still associated. I just don't there anymore. What were those orders? Um, you know, various monk business about things they would like for me to take care of while traveling. Seems rather vague answer, but then again, I've given some vague answers myself in my time. 
So, did you like it there in the monastery? What all did they teach you? It's, you know, peaceful. You get a lot of... You learn a lot of religion. You learn a lot about the deity you're serving. So there's, you know, lots of books and study. There's lots of meditation. And probably my favorite part is the combat training. I've always enjoyed combat tra training myself. It's always fun to pick up new styles and different techniques. So some are not my thing. Why are you not a fan of some? Or rather, is there anything specific you don't like? I'm always been more drawn towards finesse fighting, though that doesn't mean I can't appreciate the usefulness of being able to knock an enemy out with a single blow. It's just personal preference sure. and, th and things I'm more comfortable with. Understood. I like finesse style too. Oh, being able to knock someone out in a single blow would be handy sometimes. Different tools for different situations. Agreed. So, how did you first meet Arnimus and the rest of your friends? You know, it's been a long time. And I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I think I was doing some monastery business around town. Somehow. Makes sense. If you're talking about the monastery, I think you're talking about there's... They can duck business in some interesting places. Yeah, we do a lot of public service. Yeah, you do. Including stopping the god of chaos from taking over the god of death, is, if I'm remembering that correctly. Ah, uh, something like that. Doing that. That was a pretty big public service, right? Yes, indeed it was. How did you manage that? I remember there was a plan of draining his power using the that relic, the belt, or the mantle that you found. Yeah, Brumble's mantle. That's how we did it. It was mostly that, and then Arnus being a badass. And then actually, I think eventually, I mean, eventually Arnus did it with his words. Killed a god with his words. That's very impressive. I didn't know that was possible. Neither did I. Imagine that's Calm. terrifying. Was your god pleased? He was. He is. He's very happy with all of us. And yet you seem like something is bothering you. Well, there's a couple things. Does your somberness have anything to do with this illness that has been spreading ever since he fell? Oh yeah, you could say that. It's hard to see so many people hurting so badly. Beyond the death of the god, um, do you know if there is anything else that is tying into this reaction? Anything that could maybe be done to stop it? I knew not be stoppable this was Coram's plan all along it, you mean he used another god trying to take his place as a way to bring about more death suppose that's accurate theoretically yeah that's 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 more or less it how long have you been planning something like that Sorry, that's a general question, not something I expect you to know the answer to. I don't. He didn't tell me it would happen. And tell us it would happen. Imagine he knew if he had told you, you would not have gone through or found a way to make sure that it didn't happen. Yeah, especially the bard. So you're currently feeling partially like your god may have betrayed you in a way or at least misled you not sure I would word it that way but I think it's fair to say I'm a bit conflicted that's at the, at the very least is understandable do you care for a, a drink 
May not solve all your problems, but it may help a little. Solve some of them, sure. Alright, I'll have another round of drinks for me and my friend. Oh, what do you, what do you and Arlenis and your other friend plan on doing now? So that's the other issue. Is we kind of lost our friend Vale, the giant portal. Uh, your friend fell through the portal, or? A appeared during the battle. It they're, in, they're in Coram's realm, but not dead. So, how? I imagine it's not some simple trick for one to enter the realm of the dead without being dead. There was Coram's intervention involved. There were portals involved. It was pretty complicated. So he, Cordum, stepped in to help ensure that you were successful. Well, getting lost wasn't part of the plan. It was a side effect, I think. So when somehow Cordum stepping into things, that to Veil getting pulled into his world or something like that? I thought I felt some... So the first thing we have to do is figure out how to get Veil back. Which would most likely mean you interacting with Cordum. Seems likely. Someone you're trying to figure out how you feel about. Yeah, that's fair. We may need a, another few drinks tonight. I don't know why I do it's trying to help make sure all the sick people have been taken care of has been not... It's, it's been an interesting feat of organization. Interesting how? There's a lot going on that we... That the few healers I've been able to bring in and my researcher friends are having trouble. It's not quite like anything they've seen before. So it's been a lot of trial and error to figure out the best way to treat the symptoms. As well as finding a way to fix whatever it has been done. Understood. Yeah, it's not very normal, is it? No, oh, it's not, but we have resources and I may know some people who can help. Getting hold of them is going to be tricky, but they do know a fair bit more about this than I do. Start, at least. I wouldn't know where to begin. Mostly... I don't either. That's why I start by calling in the cavalry, finding the people I trust who know more about what's going on than I do. Strategy. I like it. So, once you find Vale, what is your plan then? Well, I don't know. We're torn. I'm torn. And are set on trying to figure out how to fix this, but sure I can be a part of that. Because the, it is the will of the god you serve. Correct. And I've been tasked with helping those people in a different way. Does your monastery say of this? Oh, I haven't written home yet. I should probably do that. I'd be very interested to see what they think. To see if they agree with what is going on, or maybe have different opinions. Actually, they know what he's doing, though. It's very likely that they don't. The gods are good at hiding the truth from their people. He's probably tasked them with helping, too. With helping take care of the sick, or with what? He, those who are beyond help, yeah. We've been tasked with helping. At least I have. I assume they have too. Not sure how I feel about the this plan that he has going on. Whatever it may be. Not all that sure either. Oh. Have you been helping or are you trying to decide? I haven't had the chance yet. But, oh, I have to do what he says. Because you made an oath of some sort? I'm a monk. When your guide gives you an order, it's like 
not like when your boss gives you an order. You just do it. Do it without question? Yeah. I personally believe some things are worth questioning, but different personal beliefs, different personal experiences. So what was your life like before all of this? For the monastery? Yes. Or before? Well, both. It was nice before the monastery. Dad was a, is still a, a highly respected merchant and aristocrat, really. So I was raised in, I guess you would call them affluent or wealthy circles. I'm used to nicer things than monk robes. I imagine so. Monk robes are more for functionality than anything else. Well, some of them are symbolic. I've gotten used to it, but I miss the variety. I was going to ask if you ever considered returning home. Or have you gone home? We did go home. There was a... I probably told you he's a war hero and all that. Yes, he may have mentioned. He was also struggling with the thought of having to kill a god. Understandably so. Understandably. So maybe he didn't tell you about the rebellion he started. The rebellion? Yeah, the bard led of rebellion. I don't believe he mentioned that. He was preoccupied with more recent events. This was a long time ago. But, since you ask about Karami, we freed it. What did you free it from? The elven monarchy. I believe I heard of that. There were a lot of elves that were very unhappy about that, but I think they were more upset that their pride was wounded. Though I don't know if most of the ones I heard talking about it had anything to do with it. Yeah, they weren't too happy with us about that one. How did you all get started leading a rebellion? Well, there was one particularly corrupt aristocrat. He was a count. His name was Valance. And he had rubbed us the wrong way early on. He didn't treat us very nicely. Tend to not. Unless they think they can get something of value from you. So, what led you to starting this rebellion? Well, to be honest, it was mostly cover, because we had to take out the Count. Figured, what an easier way to take out an account than just sort of kill him in the process. I like the way you think. It's very effective. We got the public on our side. And we freed a town in the process, so we did some good, too. Feels good, doesn't it, when you're working to achieve your own goals helps save others? It does. I work to achieve my own goals, because usually we inadvertently help others in the process. The adventuring life is a unique one, for sure. Indeed. You never know what's going to happen. So the rebellion started as a side effect, but it was successful, yes? It was successful. Soon after we we fought off the monarchy, the chaos mages showed up and we had to fight them off. And we did. They're some of the most annoying people to fight. Wait, they're the worst. You never know what's going to happen with them. Although, sometimes the swing still unnerving, not having any idea how it's going to go. That is true. I never liked fighting Chaos Mages, though I've met one or two who were much older, more to beholden to a former because of Chaos, who was not as terrible as the current one. So they were able to teach me a few tricks that I find rather helpful. Interesting. Chaos Magic tricks? Yes, it's hard to explain, and a lot of what they taught me was how to evade such tricks. That makes sense. That would be useful. Useful indeed. Unfortunately, I'm terrible at explaining it to other people. It's okay. I don't think I'll be fighting any Chaos Mages anytime soon. Probably not, and if you do, they're probably not going to be as powerful as those. Since they now no longer have a god, at least for the time being. Hey, isn't it great? 
there's that upshot. Yes. See, we did a public service. I'm yeah, I'm sure someone will rise to fill in the vacancy, but hopefully they will have learned the lesson from their predecessor. Gods okay. tend to get rather defensive when they're def defeated by humans or more or any sort of mortals. Sure. Embarrassing, to say the least. If gods are one thing, they're vain. So true. Except Coram, of course. They all have their own forms of vanity. It's not always a bad thing. I meant no offense to Cor to your god. No, none taken, I know. So what other accidental feats of heroism have you achieved on your way to achieving your own goals? Not sure if any of them are exactly what you'd call heroic. A lot of our exploits are to an end or in case in Vale's case means to an end means to an ending even that's fair most heroes go out looking for glory and they think everything's going to be so great that they're going to go out and save the world but it doesn't always work that way things are always much more complicated than you think they will be exactly so much more complicated Especially when it comes to the gods. I think of one thing we did that was good, though. That I just remembered. Oh, yes? We rescued a frozen a dragon from a frozen lake. That we did. Hmm. How did a dragon get trapped in a frozen lake? Ooh. I think he was already down there and the lake froze over him. I forget. Imagine he was very grateful. He was appreciative. He helped us out a little while after that. Up to you and good things somewhere? Or dealing with some enemies? Enemies, he helped us. But you can't keep a dragon around for long, you know? No, you can't. But it's so wonderful when you get to, get to keep them around for a while. People take you much more seriously. Right. But I find that also there are other ways to gain respect, even if... They do not respect you for just building a name for yourself and so forth. Been without a dragon? It's ironic that I'm saying that because I'm one who tends to work more in the shadows than anything. Ah, uh, like me. No way, yes. I find it much easier to save the world if you're helping the heroes get to where they're going instead of always rushing off to save it yourself. Smart. I'm willing to if the need requires, but in the meantime, I've got more than a few things I'm keeping an eye on. Good. Me too. Do you ever think about going back to your old life, the life you had before the monastery? Yeah, all the time. I miss it. It was simple, uncomplicated. And it was better. The clothes were nicer parties were fancy. Oh, that I imagine to be very true. It's been a while since I've been to a proper party, but I'm sure once things settle down here and we find a way to stop this illness from spreading, there will be one. That's motivation. Use a proper party. Yes, you look like it. You're looking slightly less morose now. I think the alcohol's helping a little. Understandably so. Probably helps to have some pleasant distraction as well. That too. It does not do you well to spend too much time trapped in your own head. I'm speaking from personal experience. Especially at this era when you're in a situation like the one we're all in now. I think it's normal at this time for people to questioning things. It doesn't do well for people to get too bogged down in their own heads trying to figure it out and solve mysteries. That's why I've been trying to get people to gather together for rebuilding, providing help for the people who are trying to find a way to end this sickness. It's better to do something to solve the problem than sit there trying to figure out the problem. Though sometimes 
sometimes problems are more complicated than can be solved in one day. So find concrete steps, right? Yeah. Sometimes all you can do is keep moving forward and keep in mind who you are, what you believe in, and why you stand for what you stand for. It can help things become more clear as time goes on. Especially when you're dealing with a crisis of conscience of sorts. So have you tried speaking with your god, Coram, since all this has ended? Not really. Quick conversations about, mostly about Vale. I've definitely avoided certain lines of inquiry with him. Oh, uh, do you know Vale is alright? Coram confirms that Vale is alive, yes. Oh god, that's very good to hear. But in the realm of the dead, we don't know. We don't know what that's like for a living person. Vale will likely need as much help and support as they can get when they return. Try and remember that. To be in the world where you're not supposed to be, surrounded by those who are not as you are, very disturbing indeed. It would be best to rescue them as quickly as possible. It's not a place I would want anyone to spend any amount of time. Probably how Vale feels here, though. So maybe they're used to it. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, they're, they're a unique individual. There aren't a lot of people around like Vale. You don't have to be so vague with me. Oh. Nothing you tell me will leave this table. Unless you're planning on destroying the world. Not planning on it. Not planning on it. Then we're good then. Bill has a certain lineage and corresponding abilities that makes them unique, but also the target of much, the word, stigma. Project reality indeed. Guess it's a good thing Vale has you then. I'm not sure they would agree to that, but, you know, on our best. Well, you're going to find them, are you not? We are. We are. I can't think of anything better to have than friends who are willing to wander the world of the dead to find you. It's true. Even if you don't necessarily get along or see eye to eye all of the time. None of the time. Guessing the two of you tend to butt heads? More often than not, it's always, always Aranus being the peacekeeper. It's kind of funny because you'd think Vale and I win. Maybe that's the problem. We have too much in common. We know each other too well, maybe. Having much in common can make it difficult to see eye to eye in the strange way at times. But I find it is possible to find the middle ground in a way to reach an understanding. Usually, especially with the bard's help. Did that. I find myself more and more thankful that he, the two of you, that you weren't able to find the bard. Also, because they're very useful, very talented people. Ah. Uh, and sometimes terrifying. This is all of those things, but very handy to have on your side. And less complicated to work with than Vale. Yes, bards can be rather straightforward, even though they are wily at times. Oh, there's still some things you don't tell Arnis, or at least there used to be. Used to be before... Uh, he's mellowed a little. Some pretty high morals. I imagine having to fight and kill a god forces and want to change to reconsider the one's moral views. Yeah, I guess you have to see a bigger picture, right? Yes, so though, there are some things that are worth holding on to when it comes to mortals. Some things? Yes, and it varies from person to person, but as I said, as long as you are not intent on destroying the world and all the people in it, we're good. It's a fair point. There are some things that are worth protecting. Some things are. And I find people, even though they can be annoying 
and challenging, especially in large groups, are worth saving. There are two, mostly. I've seen the good that comes from the wake of destruction, where it tends to draw people together, bring them closer to help tear down some of the old things that kept them apart. I guess that's one upside of terrible things happening. That brings out the best in people, right? Yes, and I'm already heartened slightly by the willingness the people have shown to help each other, even though the situation is beyond most normal disasters. Almost like you need the bad to see the good. Uh, can't no joy without pain. Love without exactly. loss, can you? Oh, exactly. It's a balance of things. And keeping that balance. Probably why all this was necessary. Uh, sometimes keeping the balance is easier said than done. Some people will accidentally tilt the scales too far to one way or another in an effort to keep the balance, and the overproduction can be messy. Yeah, that sounds pretty apt right now. Yes, sitting in the wake of the destruction of a god, it does. It's... I imagine the pantheon is currently in a bit of an uproar. I have an opening. Yes, they do, and I'm intrigued to see who or what fills it. This won't even apply for that job. You never know, like you said, there needs to be a balance without chaos. How can one have order? True. So I do agree. The world was getting a little too much chaos. I just hope it doesn't correct too far to back the other way. It's not the world that I'd like to live in. I'm sure what that would look like. Not a pretty picture, I don't believe. There will be lots of things to... It's hard to imagine. There will be a lot of things to keep an eye on in the near future. It is things shift around and find their new normal. But I feel confident that things will even out sooner or later. Eventually. I hope you're right. I feel like we'll end up being tasked with that one, too. Very well, maybe, especially if the other gods or if people interested in whichever side discover who it was who took down chaos. True. I wonder if things will change for my monastery and our ilk. It very well may. Hopefully for the better, though. We'll certainly be busy for a while. That is true. That is true. It's going to be an interesting year. They're not too interesting. I can't take much more interest. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that you're going to get to say in that. So rarely do. Hopefully, things will at least turn out better for you. Life on the road and a life of adventure can take you to some places you never expected to find yourself, but as long as you're careful and as I say, or don't lose who you are, you may find yourself somewhere you never expected to be, yet feels like it's where you were meant to be. As opposed to this, which is somewhere I never expected to be and I don't really want to be here. Things will get better soon. Might get a little worse before them, but they will get better. I hope we've worked too hard to see the world fall to pieces. I'm in a strange position because I can't, I can't want things to go back to normal too much, because you know this was my God's doing. I can't wish against His will. I find mortals tend to have more. Pretty well than the gods do. The gods are bound by what they are the gods of, but it's not such a terrible thing to want something. Like I said, the world is likely never going to return to that normal. 
seems that way. All we can do is do what we can to make sure that whatever the new normal is, is better. That's all I can do to that end is what I've been tasked in Quorum's Grace to those who need it. Well, on that note, let's have another drink to whatever the new normal may be. Whatever it is. Tales of Adventure is directed and produced by me, Brianna Toiber, as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network. The music is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To see more of his work, visit his website at chesterstudios.net. Find out more about Pseudonym Social by visiting our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. If you like what I'm doing and would like to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial and choose one of the tiers connected to Tales of Adventure. You can also leave a review on iTunes to make our show easier to find for those who need it.